Hi, good day and welcome to today's class. We will be discussing about text mining and also how clustering technique helps in text analysis, text data analysis. So we will be learning about application of clustering on text data as well. And the end of the class, we will be building a similar kind of representation with words, which is called as word cloud. Using R, we will be building something called as word cloud. And using this word cloud, we will be inferencing the sentiment about the text data that we get. And this text data that we are looking at is predominantly getting generated nowadays. Thanks to the social media, thanks to the internet, a lot of text data is getting generated for businesses, for uh, individuals, right? If we want to analyze the sentiment of businesses or even for, let's say, a very famous person, then we might have to look into the analysis of textual data, which is a little different because if you look into the text data, the text data would be unstructured. There will be no formal structure to this text data. When I say structured and unstructured, the data will not have a tabular format representation. There will be no labels to the data. If you are able to load the data into an RDBMS, then it is called as a structured data because it has a proper tabular format to it. But if a data which does not have a proper tabular format to it, then that data is called as unstructured data. These are the few examples that we can talk about when we specifically the text data. The call transcripts that we generally make or get as a follow-up call when we do some kind of a service request, when we raise a service request, right? When we want to talk to a service executive, there would be a background noise or message which mentions that the call is getting recorded for further quality purposes, right? They want to do some kind of analysis on various things based on the conversations that are happening with the customers. So these calls, they get converted into text transcripts. And over a later point of time, once you have a lot of text data collected, they do analysis, the text analysis. And using this text data, they identify the gray areas in the services that the executives are providing. Similarly, we have email to customer service. Now, a lot of people write emails to customer service to raise a right? So that is also a textual data that we get. Now, I don't have to explicitly mention about the social media outreach nowadays. There are so many social media platforms wherein individuals, organizations, right? All these accounts generate so much of data. And all this data that you see is predominantly textual data that we get. Of course, there is various forms of data that we are seeing now, like audio files, video files, images, but predominantly we take text data in social media, right? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. You can talk about so many other social media. Now here we'll also have speech transcripts. So, for example, a US President Donald Trump delivers a speech. That speech is getting converted into a text format by various media houses, various organizations, right? Automatically, you don't have to try and convert this into text data. The data would be readily available once the speech is given by the media houses. Now, we can take that data and then do analysis on what kind of sentiment what kind of emotion does Donald Trump represent when he delivers a speech based on the words that he's using to deliver that speech? Each word carries a kind of emotion, right? So we will be also doing emotion mining using the text data. Field agents, salespeople, these people collect a lot of textual data from the customers. When they provide some kind of, uh, uh, let's say, service, to the customers, they have request for feedback. The field agents, they deliver a lot of uh, uh, written data and ask for feedback. Salespeople, 
when they try and deliver some sales pitch, they again collect some kind of information from their prospective customers. There might be their contact details, their email IDs, their address, names, something. All this is a text data that we are getting, right? Now, interviews and surveys is the very important component of a data scientist uh, role because we conduct interviews or surveys or questionnaires in order to gather data. And this is the primary data that we gather. So all this data that we are looking at, these examples that we are seeing in the screen, most of this data, in fact, 80% of this data is unstructured. Very few percentage of the data would be in a structured format where you can represent the data in a tabular format. Now, what we'll do when you have this data, right? We need to look into what are the techniques that we have to apply for analyzing this data for understanding the sentiments. These are the terminologies that we have to remember. To begin with, each statement, say for example, Donald Trump delivering a speech, each statement that he delivers is called as a document, right? Now there could be a long pause. Donald Trump might take a long pause when he's giving a speech. That long pause is treated as a document again, a new entity. It is an empty document. Now, collection of these documents, that means all the statements, all the sentences that Donald Trump delivers, that gives you the raw data, right? The complete speech transcript. That would be called as corpus or corpora. In, in simple terms, your complete raw data, your text data that you're talking about, is corpus and this corpus is made out of individual documents now that document could be a statement it could be a paragraph right it could be a review if you're talking about customer reviews one entity is one document now this is the terminology and we have to remember this terminology corpus and documents now once you have this data just like any other analytical project that we are doing, we have to pre-process the data. We have to prepare the data. So we are removing a lot of gen data, which is not required for our analysis. And if you have to deliver that particular step, pre-processing step, which is also called as data cleansing step. Here, you need to understand the language first. We are talking about text data, right? And here we will be discussing about English language only. So we need to understand the language better first in order to cleanse the data. So once the data is given, we will be first identifying the typos. You can use Word document, MS Word document, which has inbuilt uh, spell check feature. We can use any other third party software that basically checks for spellings. Because we need to make sure the spellings are correct. Otherwise, if you see here, this is a typo. This might be music. Now, typo might happen just once, and the music might have been, the word might have been used multiple times. Right? So, this word will be treated differently with this word when we are doing the analysis. We don't want that to happen, right? Music is music. So we need to make sure the spelling is accurate. Once this is done, we also have to convert everything. When I say everything, all the text, entire raw data into one of the cases, either lowercase, proper case or upper case. Remember, the R software that we are dealing with, the R programming language is case sensitive. So when I look into R, this would be a different word. This would be a different word. And this capital letters would be a different word, right? And when you have a transcript or corpus, right? The text data might be written in different formats, different cases. Now, again, if you are not converting the text into one specific case, these words will be treated as different words. Again, you don't want to have these words treated differently. Next, when you are dealing with text data, 
you want to do a sentiment analysis now do you think these will give any additional information or do they give any value add absolutely not these are special symbols and punctuation marks right so we have to remove these special symbols punctuation marks as well not only that you will also be removing stop words these filler words connectors pronunciation pronouns numbers right all these unwanted things needs to be cleansed from the raw data this is done as part of data cleansing job so before we proceed this is what you have to do now not only this there is an additional step that you might want to do which is called as stemming now this stemming is a process of considering stem words from all the words which are starting with that particular stem word now if you see here i might have words like jumping jumped you might also have jumps jumpers right all these words start with word jump this word would be jump word would be stem word all the addish add-ons like ing ed here s these are called as leaf words stem and leaf concept now let me explain this using numbers as well so let's say i have a data set and i have these numbers 100 101 uh, let's say 101 108 120 let's take about these uh, six values or five values now out of this what is that value which is common 100 right 100 is the common number so this would be treated as stem number and then you have these add ons 0 10 0 1 0 and 20 these are the leaf numbers stem and leaf numbers if we add these two we will get this actual numbers right so that way you have stemming done on the words as well this process is called as stemming process once we have performed all this data cleansing and is checking the typos converting the letters to either a low case proper case or upper case removal of these punctuation marks special symbols removal of filler words connectors stop words pronouns etc also looking into the stemming right then we have to come up with structurizing this unstructured data now let's look into a simple example here if you look at this particular word all the words is stage and all the men and women were in place they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts now if you look into this this particular statement or paragraph is picked up from a very high literature related novel shakespeare's novel for example now if you talk about this particular paragraph's literature a english professor might go on and on and on explaining about the literature but for a statistician if you ask the literature does not hold any importance for a statistician these are just a bunch of words and we have to first structurize this unstructured data for performing any kind of analysis so what we do is basically we first tokenize this each word in english is separated by a space this english language is called as a space delimiter language right so using that space as a delimiter we identify each word separately and this word is called as a token so we tokenize this data of course after cleansing the, all this data so apostrophes will go off commas will go off this semicolon dots all these things are removed of course these are also gone these are stop words or filler words we will left out with only the key words or important words which actually have some contextual meaning in this particular paragraph 
and we count the frequency of these words like this so world how many times this particular word world is repeated you see here it is just repeated once then another word stage it is repeated once you see men this men is repeated twice so let us find out we have